Hi, my name is Nick Harishis. I'm a senior occupational hygienist with Bureau of Veritas Australia. Bureau of Veritas Australia is part of the global Bureau of Veritas group and is a leader in testing, inspection and certification services. This is a diagram of the human respiratory system. When we inhale airborne particles, the majority of the particles enter through the nose. A very small percentage will go through the mouth, but the majority go through the nose. The highlighted particle that you see on your screen is an asbestos fibre. Comparing the asbestos fibre with the human hair, you can see how small these particles are. So the body has a number of defence mechanisms against airborne particles. And the first mechanism of defence are the hairs in the nose. Their job is to filter the larger particles. As the airstream continues down, in the upper respiratory tract, we have these hair-like particles lining the upper respiratory tract. They're called the cilia. The cilia, in conjunction with the mucus that's secreted amongst them, trap the medium-sized particles. And then they move. And they bring this waste up to the base of the throat, where you have a choice of either spitting it out or swallowing it. However, the very, very small particles, the fine ones, the respirable ones, like asbestos fibres and crystalline silica particles, for example, will continue down the respiratory tract and end up in the gas exchange region of the lungs, in the alveoli. There, they settle. And in that region of the lung, the body has its last mechanism of defence, and that is the killer cells, or as they are known as the macrophages. So the job of the macrophages are to uh, attack, engulf and dissolve any foreign particle that ends up in that region of the lung, whether it's a bacterium or a fibre or a dust particle. However, with asbestos and, for example, crystalline silica, because of their properties and strength, they are unable to dissolve them. They engulf them and secrete various substances like enzymes, etc., in order to dissolve them. However, these substances cause damage to the alveoli, to the air sacs, and that results in a scar. Being microscopic particles and microscopic cells, you'll end up with a microscopic scar in that region of the lung. Millions and millions and millions of fibres later, all that region of the lung becomes scarred or fibrotic and the lung loses its ability to function. So it becomes hard and if you can't, if it doesn't function, the person will die from respiratory failure. I'm Nick Harissis. I'm a qualified occupational hygienist with Bureau of Veritas Australia. Thank you for watching.